Hey, what's up guys, Arvid here, and welcome back to another episode of my F123 My Team Career Mode. This is episode number 8 today for the Spanish Grand Prix in Season 1. If you guys did miss the previous episode at the Monaco Grand Prix, then be sure to go check that one out before you see this one, because that was an absolute madness of a Monaco Grand Prix. The first one that we played on this game, and it was exceptional. We had a special one-off livery for the Principality, and... And it really did give us a good bit of luck. We also had some bad luck in that race. So it didn't matter in the end. But the engine did go into lean mixture for a lap in a bit. And we lost the position. It wasn't great. It really affected performance. And so because of that, we get a nice 320 R&D for that failure. And, you know, kind of debriefing and essentially from after that one and looking into the problem. So that's a very nice little bumper of R&D, especially when we've got reduced. R&D settings in this career but you can see we're up to fifth place now in the constructors championship ahead of McLaren and Alpine and we're sitting P8 in the championship ourselves as a driver because we managed to get a podium and second place as well with the fastest lap around Monaco because we were on a quicker compound at the end after a late safety car came in and it was the perfect situation for us everyone else on hard tyres and we've got three upgrades on the way and they're all major upgrades. Major engine power and two major chassis upgrades. Things are looking good and we've got that extra bumper and R&D now to potentially spend on some upgrades. Looking around though, I didn't go for one initially and that's probably a good thing because you know, it was going really well with 320 plus R&D from the failure. Looks like we're going to need that 320 because the major engine power upgrade failed on our car. So we have to repurchase that, which is really quite annoying because if we did, if it did come through and when it does come through, we'll have the best engine on this entire grid. So that will be on the way for the Canadian Grand Prix. That's going to be very handy around Montreal. Would have been handy around Spain, to be fair, with the new last corner giving you a great slingshot onto the back straight so because of that lack of an upgrade that came, didn't come in for Spain McLaren like I literally mentioned last episode eventually McLaren and Alpine were gonna make a big step McLaren make a very big step indeed that looks like you know at least one major upgrade and maybe a minor on top of that and they're actually closer to Aston Martin now in performance than they are to ourselves and Alpine so very good progress from McLaren because he has have also got into the mixer as well and they're actually technically along with Alpine been ahead of us on paper on the R&D chart. So this race might be a bit more of a struggle than we found Monaco. We might have Magnussen again appearing around us, Hulkenberg as well, and that's potentially just more cars to fight then for those all crucial last couple of points in the top 10. And I feel like it may be a fight for those last couple rather than all the way up in the podium like we were at Monaco. But it's the ebb and flow of a season. Hopefully when that power upgrade comes in for Canada, that will be us back on Warm, but Spain, let's see how it goes. A big upgrade and leap on the R&D chart doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be that huge of an advantage for McLaren. I mean, just look at Red Bull Racing. They've been ahead on the R&D chart this entire season, and yet they don't lead both championships. So it's not the gospel, as I've said before, and I am finding a groove around Catalonia. I'm loving the updated Spain circuit, going back to the old final corner layout, the slingshot onto the main straight. Feels very satisfying, would feel probably more satisfying with even more downforce, but P11 Q1 is a pretty good start. You can see McLaren do look quite strong there. Piastri's up there. That's how you know the team has really improved, because Lando so far has been the one dragging that car up into some higher positions, but if both drivers are there, that's even more of a challenge. So we have, you know, maybe Magnus in there with the Haas, both McLarens, and then the Alpine drivers. So plenty of fire to be done and in Q2 we are finding things a bit more difficult than in Q1. This happened at Monaco as well for whatever reason these last two races you know Q1 really good feeling in the car and then we get to Q2 and the car feels slightly worse and it's not going to be a great first lap here in Q2 as we get a bit too eager on the throttle. Big tank slapper two times in fact having to catch the rear end of the car. I don't know maybe it's because I'm pushing harder to try and extract more lap time 
and I'm reaching the limit of this car, potentially, because, of course, we know the AI speed up. Their lap times, you know, get quicker and quicker as we go on through the sessions. I'm trying my best to keep up with that, to try and stay in the same sort of position. We are in Q2, and I push it a bit too hard on this second flyer, and we break our floor and bargeboard area by getting on that very dangerous sausage curb on the outside in the middle of the sector so we've actually still we're still up on our first time in the first and second sector by about half a second but you can see now the effects of that damaged floor and it is an absolute howler it was understeer city i tried to kind of correct it with a bit more throttle to get the nose turned round and it just ended up with an oversteer moment and completely bottling that that is a crash back down to reality for the Monaco Grand Prix. That is such a poor qualifying. We could have done so much better there. The car could have done better there. But again, like Monaco, a bit puzzling of why it felt worse. At least in Monaco, I, I ended up extracting the lap time anyway. Even though the car kind of felt worse, it still got through the sessions. This one, it felt worse and I couldn't extract the lap time. So we're going to start in P16. Both McLarens through into Q3. One of the Alpines. So we have got a real fighter on our hands for those last couple of positions if we can get that far at the start of the race anyway from P16 on the grid. Let's go to the race. So many eventful races here in Barcelona over the years. Do you remember Max Verstappen's first win on debut for Red Bull here in 2016? Two years before, we had the dramatic coming together of Hamilton and Rosberg going towards turn four. There's always a treat in store as we head back to the Circuit de Barcelona Catalunya for the Spanish Grand Prix. It's an updated track at Catalunya, and the popular opinion in the paddock is that we never wanted the chicane in the first place. That's now been gone, the final corner is much faster, and at 2.9 miles and 14 turns, we await the Spanish Grand Prix. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position, just ahead of George Russell, who starts this event from P2. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Verstappen, Leclerc, Perez, Sainz, Norris, Fernando Alonso, Oscar Piastri, Gasly, Ocon, Sonoda, Magnussen, Hulkenberg, Stroll, Bottas, Joe, Albon, Iwasa, De Vries, Iwasa. Which of these talented drivers will come out on top today? Natalie Pinkham joins me once again in the commentary box. It's fantastic to have you with us today. I'm curious, though, how do you think the drivers stop those pre-race nerves from becoming overwhelming when you're lining up on the grid? Well, the regulations aren't new anymore, but the teams and the drivers are still coming to terms with them. I firmly believe it's also track-specific. We've seen some wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing throughout the year. Some tracks lend themselves better to it than others. I'd like to see it at every race in the whole season. Is that too much to ask? Well, from P16, we've got our work cut out for us. We're going to start on the medium compound attire. A lot of people around us starting all on soft. So we are going differently. And that can be a little bit worrisome or scary. But like Monaco, I'm taking some inspiration from there. Start, you know, ending on a quicker compound. I think right now with where the car is, is the way to go. And you know what? Those two upgrades we've done so far on tyre wear... You'll, you'd, have, you'd have noticed in the last two episodes, they've made that difference. You know, Imola, we had consistency on that last medium tyre stint. Monaco, again, with the medium... The, these tyre upgrades have made the medium tyre a good tyre for us again, unlike at the very start of the series and the game when we were really chewing them up. So I think the medium tyre will be a good one for us right now, and we're going for a very aggressive one-stop from mediums to softs. Yep, mediums to softs one stop here at Spain. Sounds audacious. In real life, they are doing two stoppers. We're going to try the one stop, medium to softs. Others will go from softs to maybe hards or mediums. We're going opposite to try and be quicker at the end. But let's see how this start goes. It's an all Mercedes front row as they've been improving steadily. Five red lights are out and we're underway. It's a good getaway versus Lance Stroll getting boxed out 
by the two Haskars. If we kept our footing, we absolutely would have got pinched in by either Magnussen or Hulkenberg as we're fighting a lot of cars that I thought we were going to be seeing the last of, really, for the rest of this season. But trying to make up for that poor quality by trying to go around the outside now of Hulkenberg through the long right-hander. But it's so difficult to really find some space. We're all side by side. It's great to see, but not great to try and cut through the traffic as we actually lose the position to Hulkenberg initially. We come back at him though, but at the moment you can see the soft tyre is giving them a little bit of advantage. We do manage to squeeze out the Hulk, but Magnussen ahead fighting Sonoda, who's doing very well to drag that Alpha Tower. He up here, a fantastic Miami Grand Prix, of course, so he's trying to build on that. And ahead, there's some fighting. A car's slow. I think it may be Gasly who slowed everyone up. We're going onto the grass a little bit to try and get to the inside of Magnussen. Ocon is looking a bit fragile. Maybe a Sonoda is trying to hang this the long way round. Magnussen's still there on our inside. We've all been pretty much side by side for most of this lap. It's been a, a chaotic Lap one, Magnussen re-overtakes us. We almost, almost make a bit of contact with Hulkenberg. And now, look at Hawkorn and Sonoda. This is ridiculous as we come through. And it's going to be four wide onto lap two. Unbelievable. What an opening lap this has been for the midfield battle here. Incredible stuff. We've just made a triple overtake on lap two to get up into P11. The rest of the field ahead of us are all on mediums because they obviously use all their soft tyres in Q3. So we're the lowest driver on these medium tyres and crucially, we have cleared every single soft tyre runner. Magnussen trying his best to reverse that, but we squeeze him out and we are going to remain in P11. And now it's about trying to break the DRS from Magnussen before it gets activated and trying to chase after the top pack, which is led by George Russell. Russell. Look at the gap the Mercedes cars have. 1.4 seconds to Leclerc. The Mercedes upgrades have worked wonders this season. It was a 1-2 for the Medimola. And two races later, it's a 1-2 at Catalonia as Verstappen tries to go for the move on Leclerc to get up into P3. Meanwhile, ahead, I think it's uh, Hamilton. Yeah, Hamilton's got up into P1. We were too busy watching the Verstappen-Leclerc fight to see that. But the two Mercs have swapped positions. And now Sainz has got ahead of Sir Lando Norris. Sergio Perez having a stinker here for Red Bull. Verstappen trying to make the most of it and get ahead of Leclerc to now maybe chase after his rivals at Mercedes. Sainz booking in that position versus Norris. But, you know, Lando looks pretty damn punchy in that upgrade to McLaren. Piastri very good as well and P9 ahead of Gasly. And there we are. We have to try and bridge a 2.9 gap now in this next stint. That's going to be difficult. But at the front, the fighting, the swapping just continues as Russell once again leads the Grand Prix, Hamilton down to second and we see Perez getting past Carlos Sainz at his home race he won't be li liking that but Perez trying to wake up in this Grand Prix and try and match his teammate's performance but look at the train forming between the fight uh, between the, the, the Spaniard and the Mexican because now it's a train from uh, Perez to Sainz, Alonso Norris, Piastri, Gasly and we are now just about within one second of that train Magnussen the only car following us through. Ocon's had some shocking pace today. Gasly, the clear leader at Alpine today as Hamilton, you guessed it, again, overtaking Russell on lap seven as they swap positions back and forth for the one-two. Verstappen and Leclerc sticking with them within one second as well as these two swap and that just slows up this train even more to allow us to get in because even though we're within one second, just like the AI, I'm finding it difficult to kind of make a difference to maybe get Gasly. We're, we're within that margin but I'm not getting close enough to make that move just yet. We're trying our best and these guys just continuously being in each other's dirty air and a DRS train is going to slow them up eventually to the point where I can go for the move on Gasly. We're saving ERS through the final corner and then using a lot of it dumping the battery on the main straight and on lap 9, two laps later, now we are kind of near touching distance but you can see where the Alpine has the advantage through these some of these corners, the acceleration on that Alpine is pretty damn great. We have better straight line speed I think, potentially maybe I've ran two low wings on the aero for the corners but on the straights, oh my word we are bucketing along and looking to now make the move on Gasly, big dive around the outside 
to get up into P10. That has been eight laps in the making. Eight laps it took us to overtake Gasly and break the de deadlock. And ahead of us, there's some squabbling going on because those cars are as close as they ever have been. As we now watch the top by and Verstappen goes for the move to try and break the Mercedes deadlock at the front row. Verstappen trying to get in a Mercedes sandwich. Russell showing him the door on the exit to maintain the one-two for Mercedes. Now this train is spearheaded by Fernando Alonso because Sainz has broken away from that. But Perez is still in the train and he's being attacked by the McLaren. So Perez going real slow. Maybe he has some sort of problem with his car potentially because I'm very surprised at the McLaren going for the move and he's done it. Lando gets round the outside of turn two. Perez down to eight. This is shocking. One more position gained for us and we'll be high be behind Perez and we're catching Piastri. He's had a pretty poor exit off the final bend. We've had a great launch. We're using a lot of battery and we're down to single digits on the ERS but we're going to get the move on the inside and I've got so much confidence in the car under braking into turn one that we're just able to send it and get to the apex. A little bit wide sometimes but we're still making it work and making the corner and now the next car along is Sergio Perez and he's behind Norris. Norris in the, well technically should be the slower car so maybe there's an opportunity to get the Red Bull here because I want to be fighting really realistically Lando but to do that I'm going to have to try and get past Perez if Perez doesn't get a move on. I actually asked my engineer about a driver update because I was certain this can't be the pace of Perez like under normal conditions and if you look at the bottom of the subtitles eventually my engineer does tell me that Perez has front wing damage so he is vulnerable. That Red Bull is there for the taking and it shows through the final bend as we're wringing the neck out of this car pushing so hard, pushing the limit of what it can do. We're catching Perez because in the corners he's not that great and in a straight line right now he's not in DRS anymore of the car ahead. He's a sitting duck. It's oh so close but we get the elbow out and we squeeze Perez so much so that Piastri gets him as well because he's got no front end. He probably got so much understeer from the dirty air and the broken wing he has. Unfortunately though for me Piastri is coming back at us now as we don't have any DRS to help us like Perez ahead of us because Alonso and Norris are in their own battle. They've pulled away. They've got a bit too much pace for us right now. So we're now locked into a battle with Piastri, the man we started fighting at the very beginning of this career series. But now we're both fighting for points paying position. So we've both had a bit of a glow up since the Bahrain Grand Prix. Piastri the long way around. We've got a few marbles on the tyres as we're on the dirty side of the racing line. We tried to cut in and a bit uh, be a bit too clever to be honest and it didn't work out for us. Piastri has absolutely done me in that corner. I really thought I was doing something by breaking early there and cutting in tight but no. Instead we'll have to play the patient game of this uh, kind of you know just swapping positions just like the Mercs were doing at, at the front of the grid basically to get the position back on Piastri but this looks to be maybe our fight today versus the Australian because Alonso's 4.8 seconds up the road Norris is ahead of him then ahead so they're both checked out of our races we see Leclerc going slowly oh goodness me you know what for all the you know performances maybe not being exactly like real life the game's nailed Leclerc's bad luck because, what was it? He was down in P16 at Monaco, having got pole position, got a penalty, not on pole, and here he suffers another engine failure. His second one this season because he, he had one at Miami. So, yeah, absolutely miserable, torrid luck for Charles Leclerc in our career mode series in season one at Ferrari. For our race, you can see we've pit in now on lap 18 onto 19 from the lead of the Grand Prix because we were the last person to come into the pits. We've stretched these mediums so so far and that's in order to strap on a brand spanking new set of soft tyres we've lost positions in the pit stops but that's because we went long we had to stretch it to make this soft tyre stint possible and now we have some fun it's flat out pushing on these softs to recover the positions we've lost going long on the mediums and we've just got to hope that there's enough pace in the softs to actually re-overtake the likes of Piastri Magnus Magnuson's done it insane he was behind all of us 
Plus, remember, on the soft compound, and he's jumped everyone. He's jumped Piastri, Gasly, Perez, myself, Sonoda. He's jumped everyone there. So he's a, a fantastic first part of the race in terms of the strategy. And remember, Perez now must have changed his front wing. So he's going to be a bit tougher to overtake. So we've got a lot of hard work to do. But later, uh, further up the, the road, you've got Alonso, Norris in P6 and 5, Sainz P4 in no man's land, Verstappen in P3 chasing after Russell and Hamilton has a very comfortable 1.4 gap compared to Russell who's going to be feeling the pressure from the Dutchman. Can he make the move for P2? No, Russell just parks it awkwardly enough and the Red Bull doesn't have the straight line speed to get it done into turn one. Hamilton at the moment enjoying a bit of controlling this race from the front. For us, P11, we've been, you know, we've lost a couple of positions. We've got jumped by Magnussen, but now we need to make it count. Magnussen may seem like so far down the road, but he's actually the one we're looking to try and chase after long term by the end of the race. And look at the pace difference of softs versus hards. I don't know if Perez changed his wing or not. If he has, that is shocking. That is insane pace from the soft compound versus the hards. Gasly makes the move on Piastri. We're going to set up a a wonderful little switch from right to left. We're going to catch Piastri and Gasly napping and go right round the outside of both of them for the triple overtake to get up into P9. Let's watch that again just to show. Look at that. We're pretty, pretty much pushing Perez through that corner. So he must have that damaged wing still. That can't be the actual pace of the hard compound. I mean, that would be really raucous. So I think he's still got damage, but I was really proud of this overtake. Just a little moment to tuck in tight, use the extra grip around the outside and the soft tyre comes into its own and we weren't even deploying too much ERS also around the outside there. And now we've got clean air to chase after. Well, this man Kevin Magnussen, lap 24 this is now, so it's taken three laps to catch up to him, he's on the medium tyre, so he's got a bit more pace maybe than the hard tyre runners we just passed before in that clip but uh, we've actually pulled them along, speaking of, look at the times there, Gasly is under, under a second, and on the minimap you can see Perez as well, so basically though them two, they've used me as a horse to their carriage for DRS basically, it's worked out for them because now they're here, you know, once I overtake Magnussen they could maybe go on and try and overtake take him as well but let's first of all do our bit and try and get the Dane it's been a long time coming K-Mag's done so well to be in this position to be fair with that undercut strategy but we're gonna ruin the day and get up to P7 and to my surprise Lando Norris is right up ahead of us and again I had to ask my engineer what's going on with uh, the car in front of me because he was miles away he should have been where Alonso is right now nine seconds ten seconds down the road but you may have seen there with the subtitle Mark, my engineer, told me that he's got a car issue. So no wonder he's this slow. Because really, he was ahead of Alonso. He should probably still be there 10 seconds down the road. Because I'm not catching Alonso. That's not happening. So this is the fight that we're in. Once we get Lando, that's where we are. P6. We're fighting for P6. Which is bloody amazing considering how this weekend started in qualifying. And also my worry about where McLaren would, would be with the R&D chart. To be honest, it, you know, it would have come true if Lando didn't have a car issue, but he does. And so he's super slow. It's an easy overtake. And uh, Piastri's nowhere to be seen. So he struggled in this race, as he has done all season, to match Lando Norris's AI, who's been the man dragging that McLaren up to positions it probably shouldn't be in. Uh, but now that he's got a car issue, well, look at that. Magnussen goes for the move. Probably even Perez and Gasly fancy overtaking him in the next, uh, next lap or two. As they're side by side, it's kind of a two by two into turns one and two. Some really excellent battling going on here at the Spanish GP, I must say, with the, even the AI on AI battles as Magnussen is up into P7. So once again, myself and K-Mag punching above our weight. And uh, it's another race that is a pretty decent one for the midfield teams. Of course, the, the top five uh, locked out by the Mercedes, Verstappen in Sainz and Alonso. But P6 is still bloody great for us in season one. 
um, especially going into it with ha ha how poor we were on the Saturday. But lap 27, maybe now a little bit of tire wear coming into play as we have a little subtle oversteer moment in the last sector. And that's really not great for our momentum through this entire slingshot where it's all about carrying the speed. And Magnussen is there in the mirrors. We're moving about to try and break the DRS. Perez is now getting involved. We stay on the racing line. Perez is going to come in. Sorry, K-Mag. We box him in. And Perez is the one down the inside. Now, to be fair, usually I wouldn't bother maybe putting up too much of a fight on the red ball. But I reckon we could re-overtake him and actually still get this P6. He's overtaken us there. But I actually still think he's got that damage. He must do. He can't have been that slow legitimately this entire race, even at the start of this stint for me. So we're going to go and overtake him. And we can. I mean, we've got the base. We've got the base. We're there. And it's, we don't even need to use ERS. Look at that DRS speed we've got versus Perez up to B6. So he must really, I mean, the both Red Bull drivers recently probably hate us in terms of how annoying we've been for them as we move on to the second last lap of the Grand Prix. Hamilton is down in P2, so he missed an overtake where Russell got the lead, but it won't matter. Hamilton comes back at him for the race lead, and this is for revenge for the Imola GP where Russell got the win. Hamilton had to settle for second place, but Hamilton takes the lead of the Spanish Grand Prix then. Verstappen was close by, but hasn't been able to do anything versus the Mercedes so their upgrades have really come in just like in real life they're looking good at Catalonia as we are looking a bit slow in the last sector I can't lie the only thing we have got going for us is our straight line speed out this final corner uh, with DRS but at the moment I don't have DRS and Perez is going to re-overtake us but if we just stick with him I am confident we can re-overtake him this is a bit ballsy not putting up that much of a fight on Perez because I definitely could have squeezed him a bit more but on the second last lap onto the last lap of the Grand Prix I'm thinking let's overtake him for P6 onto the last lap and then he can't get us on the line I don't think he will but the tyres are definitely feeling it now. Look at the bottom right, the heads up display. It's orange now on the tyre icon. You can see Perez is pulling away from us in the kind of subtle medium speed corners here in the last sector. He's seven tenths ahead. But then look at the speed we're going to gain here. Deploying all of our ERS down to 0% battery. DRS open. Perez is a sitting dart. This DRS is ridiculous. And remember, we upgraded our DRS, so maybe that's it. It's come into play, and that's why I said in my tips video, upgrade the DRS. It's a powerful tool. We were seven tens back from Perez, and we just caught him in one straight. That is unreal, unreal stuff, and that is going to help us book in this P6 because there's not much other places where Perez can overtake us. He's going to try and move on the outside. We're going to stick to the inside and defend it, and we have enough traction just to stay ahead there. And uh, we watch on back to the front fight. And it's another 1-2 for Mercedes this season. And it's this time, it's Lewis Hamilton that takes his first victory of 2023. Season 1 in my team career mode there. So Mercedes are back. It would seem they've still got some way to catching Ferrari in the constructors. Red Bull as well, to be fair. So this is fantastic. We're getting all the hallmarks of a three-way title fight with the teams, with all the drivers involved. And for us, I mean, look how second-hand those tyres are. Those tyres are done. Perez almost, almost pushing me across the line. But it's a fabulous, fabulous P6 at Catalonia. I couldn't have asked much else. It should have been P7 because Lando had a problem. Should have been P8 because Perez had a problem. So I'll take the P6. That's great. That's it for another Grand Prix and a fantastic win for Mercedes. Natalie Pinkham, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? Well, confidence breeds confidence. Success breeds success. They are very much enjoying a purple patch right now. After an excellent performance at the Grand Prix, I'm sure there'll be plenty of celebrations tonight amongst the Mercedes team, and they certainly deserve it. It's going to be all smiles at Mercedes and smiles for Toto Wolff, Lewis Hamilton alike. It's another 1-2 for Mercedes. That is a big statement. Two 1-2s in three races. And again... You know, Verstappen, yes, he got P3. He did beat Sainz this time. He beat Leclerc with the DNF. But 
It's not enough still. I think Ferrari is still subtly doing enough. Like, Science there got P4. That's just a good amount of points to limit the damage versus Verstappen and the chasing pack. So, I think Science Law has a very comfortable lead in the Drivers' Championship. You know, eight rounds in. Um, which is really quite surprising. The Spaniard is the lead driver for Ferrari. And Ferrari as a team, even with Leclerc's demises, is still leading the constructors, I think. Uh, I mean, let's see the points update after this one. But for us, I'm just so happy with that P6. Eight points in the bag. It should have been P8, like I said. But, you know, we got a bit of luck with um, with Perez and Lando's issues. But look at that. Sainz, 20 points ahead of Hamilton. So seven points ahead of Verstappen. Uh, a further eight then is Russell. And then, uh, was it, seven then to, to Leclerc. So... It's very, very interesting in this Drivers' Championship fight, but Ferrari have 19 points on Mercedes, who are now in second, uh, 10 points clear of Red Bull, but it, there is a fight on. We've got so long of this season to go. Uh, this is going to be, by the end of it, I really hope it continues to be this close, because this is going to be the battle we wish we were having in real life with those three top teams. But for us, we continue to do good work. We stay in P5 in the Constructors, ahead of McLaren and Alpine. You can't ask, ask for much more at this point in the season. Guys, if you have enjoyed the episode, hit the like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're around here, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.